I don't want to make videos too long, but I also am a very busy person right now, and I feel like I want to just talk about whatever's on my mind right now in this video. Um, actually, this might be video number two. All right, I think this is a separate video from my first PSA. Um, this one is about why did I start to main Game & Watch and make Game & Watch content. Well, in my last PSA video, which I recommend listening to to get to know me a little better in some ways, um, I talked about how I started Melee um, when I was in grade 7. Um, the full story, I'll do the full, kind of the full story here. So, I, I've been, I've loved this game since then, right? My favorite two games of all time, my favorite game of all time by like 1% is Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. And then, and then number two is Ocarina. I know it's Ocarina, but for some reason I like saying Ocarina because that's what I said when I was young. Uh, Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time, whatever. It's like 49, 51%, you know. I think they're both so near and dear to me. Um, Majora's Mask, I think, is just weird and kind of fucked up. And for that reason, like, the other one is too, but for that reason, I like it, like, relative to just other stuff, other Zelda games, other Nintendo games. It was just particularly, like, strange and dark. So it stands out to me in that way. Same with the mask itself. And the final boss, like, they're actually so fucking weird. The three stages are all, like... It's a kid's game, you know? Anyways. So while those two games are my favorite games of all time, I would say Melee is tied somehow, or if I just made a separate category, like, Melee is my favorite multiplayer game of all time. And those are my favorite single player games of all time. But no, Majora's Mask is definitely number one of all time for me. It's hard for me to like compare that with Melee. Like, you know, my reasons for liking them are, are very different. And speedrunning, don't get don't get me wrong, speedrunning is very cool too. Like the speedrunning tech and, and and things that happen in that community. Randomizers. I'm I'm about that as well. But when I went to university there was university meetups at the University of Alberta, and I believe they're usually on Saturdays. And a lot of my university career, I worked on Saturdays, uh, selling wa selling watches, uh, and doing some other jobs too. But I, I was often busy on Saturdays, so I couldn't make it mo most of the time. And I'm a very social and extroverted person, but for some reason, I developed like some imposter syndrome over time because I wasn't attending these things. Um, and like social anxiety around specifically going to Smash community because of the um, imposter syndrome and like feeling that I might not fit in, even though I've been a huge fan of the game for a long time and I've been keeping up. Like, I watch on YouTube everything that I can. I actually don't watch a lot of stuff on Twitch. But, like, I've been watching top 8 highlight videos for tournaments, like, for the last several, several years. And not just that. Like, I've exhausted, like, so much Melee content pools in my life. Like, I, I love the game. I love how deep it is. I love um, how much personality there is with characters and how they play. Like, even in between the foxes, you know. I main Game & Watch, but I think Fox Studios are sick. You know what I'm saying? Um... And even though I making music is my number one thing, making art and making music, um, I want to be in film one day as well. But Melee has done so much for me, and I named one of my earlier vi one of my videos. Melee has always been a sanctuary for me. It has been. Sometimes when nothing else is. Sometimes music is the only sanctuary for me at a time. Sometimes it's Melee. Especially with Slippy, you can just hop in and play somebody. It's amazing. Um, and I wanted to, I wanted to be more part of the community, and I wanted to support them, and I want them to support me. I want the melee community to support me in my endeavors. I really do. And I would love to 
play music, live music. I love to do a set at like a, a, a major, a super major. I do it for like cheap. Just fly me out there, Johnny, and uh, or Scotty, <laughs> or whatever the thing is. Beat me up. Seriously, I would love to love to do that. And of course, of course, I'm not trying to play ignorant that like that wouldn't be good opportunity for me. But like it would be so much fun. And I feel like it'd be a way that I can give back, especially because I try to keep that vibe within my music too. Like I'm trying to help, I'm trying to heal, I'm trying to educate, inspire, have fun, make people dance. Like you know. Um. So I thought to myself, like, how can I? Oh, and then the other thing. Sorry, the other thing worth mentioning is. I've played for somebody who wants to make music. I've played way more music. Uh, sorry, I've played way more video games in my life than I have <laughs> done music stuff. Why? Because my core friend group in major developmental years of my life were fucking giant gamers and nerds, and 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 I love them, and I still love them to this day. We're we're all we're all homies, and you know. There might be a different reality, alternate reality version of me that ended up um, having a friend group that was all into music, and then we made a band or something. But we were all like at the beginning of YouTube, like the birth of YouTube, trying to be like content creators and like YouTube stars and like playing video games and just being nerds on vlogs, and it was lit. So, anyways, I I have obviously played a lot of music in various ways in my life. I can play guitar. That guitar, oh, that guitar is not unfortunately working at the moment, but it's beautiful. Um, I have a couple other over there, but I sing, I rap, um, and I like to make beats when I when I have the time and the space. I'm very musically inclined. It's my favorite thing in the world. I know I'm tangenting a lot, but it's kind of how my brain works. So if you're here for it, you're here for it. Great. Um, So I'm fucking, I'm sick at gaming. I'm like a god gamer. It's not exclusive to Smash. I'm going to say it. You know what? Maybe I can't be a professional. Well, I don't know. Maybe I, I, I'm choosing not to go down that route. But I think if I wanted to, I could. I do. Um, but like, I'm going to come out with a CS2 series at some point. Because sometimes I'm kind of cracked at CS2. And not just exaggerating. But there's so much left to learn and unpack in that game, even for fundamentals. I don't know any smokes in CS2. But even within the video game realm, I want to bring different gaming communities, like show them different things. And the uniting, the, the binding agent will be me. If you're interested in me and how I do things and how I think and how my skills translate between games, I, I think CS2 helps my Smash Bros. I've, I genuinely think that. And I think vice versa as well. When I, come, when I finish my next EP, the Rebirth EP, I uh, and I aim to be finished that like May 2024, and like do some marketing and stuff and performances and whatnot. After that, I want to get lost in Elden Ring. I'm a huge Soulsborne game fan, like huge. I've been playing since Demon Souls for PS3, and I had like 625 hours in that game. <laughs> and I I I binged Dark Souls one, I binged Dark Souls two, I binged Dark Souls three. Elden Ring came out, I didn't have no time to treat it like that. And it's like the biggest game out of all of them, arguably too big. I am such a fan. Oh, and Sekiro. I played Sekiro, actually. And Bloodborne I played through one time, but I never owned that one. It was fun, though, for sure. Um, Sekiro, when I moved to Japan, I brought my PC, and I played it there in Japanese, and it was amazing. I played it like when I was at home by myself. Um, I tangented so much. I hope you're listening. I seriously do, because there's there's something here. Why did I start with Mr. Game and Watch and Melee? Because I thought, if I were to give back to the community, what can I do for the community? Well, we live in an era with Slippy now, and now all these low to mid tiers are getting way more shine because they're getting way more opportunity to practice and develop through long periods of play. It, you know, each character's got a Discord with sharing information and stuff like that. Um, 
you didn't have that opportunity before. People people still don't want to play your low to mid tier character for sure. But before it was like you you can't like if you want to. People are like no fuck off like <laughs> whether they say that or think it, they're like I'm not I'm not down. Now they got no choice because you well sometimes they just say let's go with it, especially if it's ranked right. So so much new melee is happening 20 22 23 years later from the release of the game so much new because so many uh, characters are untapped and underdeveloped and i am so inspired by amsa axe junebug um um i'm missing one right now um uh, i'm missing one right now for some reason but I would say specifically AMSA cause, and Axe because um, they've won Super Majors. And I think a Game & Watch could do it. I genuinely do. I don't know if it'll be me. I don't think it'll be me because I don't think I have the drive and the time to spend toward it necessary. I hope to inspire that person, though, whoever they are. Because um, what I do have is a vision for Mr. Game & Watch that I don't think that many others have if anybody truly i believe that if it's false it's false great if it's false it's a good thing because that means it's more likely for it to come true um but i see something there and i feel like nobody everyone just wrote him off because oh he's under under like unfinished character his shield sucks uh you can't l cancel his moves i think I, I'm somebody with a broken ankle, not at the moment, but like I broke my ankle and it stunted my activities as a very active sports forward person. I'm very athletic. It stunted that for like the last five, six years, right? I view not being able to L cancel as like having an injury like that, but you learn to to play with it and to play around it. And now people weren't platform canceling, edge canceling nearly as much as they do now, shout out Zane. And on top of that, like full hop um, non L cancelable aerials don't need to be L cancelled because you're full hopping for them. So they still have a utilization in that sense. And then his other moves are just fucking fantastic. His shield kind of sucks, but also power shielding could be way more optimized uh, in, in gameplay. Uh, I I toggle I toggle with my triggers like this like all the time alternating the size of my shield like very lightly. Um, so light shielding uh, even can be under is underutilized. I don't get shield poke nearly as much as people think I would, even though it happens. <sighs> um, yes, this is a long ass rant, but. Lastly here, why did I play Game & Watch, or where did this vision come from? Well, shout out to PM one time, shout out to PM, P Plus Community, and those games. Amazing, super incredible, fun games. Also, quick shout out to Rivals of Ether 1 and 2. Um, but uh, I used to play a lot of PM when it came out. I was so hooked because I was just so into games. I slept over at my friend's house every night. we play all night, <laughs> you know, when I could do that shit. And I, I main Zelda and PM, but I also had a Game & Watch. So getting used to Game & Watch and PM and like exploring his combo potential actually translate, especially in early PM where the characters are a bit less unique comp relative to Melee, I would say. Um, a lot of it's translatable, in my opinion, even, with, even if you take out the L cancels for some of the moves. Um, so that helped quite a bit. And so... Once I feel like I see the vision for something that I care about, I feel obligated to do it, uh, to find a way, whether it's now or later. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how that started, and um, ultimately it's to give back to the community and hopefully to contribute to the further, the furthering, the development of Melee, the Game & Watch meta, and keeping the community alive and strong as long as I live, and for and as long as... Who knows? It might be the longest-lasting video, competitive video game esport to ever exist. It, like 
it's crazy how deep it is and it's crazy how like there's so much like scar always says there's so much melee left to be played it's kind of like overwhelming to think about um that well it doesn't have to be but it's a lot so thank you for listening if you made it this far um and I'll just repeat really quick the last thing I said in my first PSA. This is not a Smash exclusive, a Game & Watch exclusive, Melee exclusive channel. If you, It will have lots of other crazy cool stuff of varying types and fields. Um, for example, I used to climb cell phone towers for work and, and, and I was vlogging that entire experience. And it, there's a lot of stories there. And I'll be uploading those vlogs at some point as a series. Um, so if you want to stay subscribed for me, um, I encourage you to do so. Please do. And if you want to un unsubscribe because it's no longer Game & Watch Melee content, that's okay too. I love you either way. And uh, if you want to support me, please, please consider donating to my Patreon. I am getting it set up at the moment. Links will be in my description ASAP, hopefully in this one when it's uploaded. Um, just official officializing my business registration and stuff right now um, and eventually I'll have a website for merch and stuff too I make merch so all that will be coming it's just baby steps I'm literally like dead broke as I'm making this video right now so wish me luck oh and one more thing I really like to do it like Jackie Chan's uncle in Jackie Chan Adventures uh, and I speak Chinese so I feel like I it's okay if I do it but like some people might get mad but it's like Jackie one more thing. I love. I, whenever I want to say one more thing, I always say it like that. So it's just built in me. One more thing. Um, I I started playing during the Anthers Ladder era, online at least, and I have made one really good friend to this day that we still play. And he's I've never met him in real life, but he's from BC. Uh, shout out to Low Nasty. And that was only possible with Anthers. You know, I was like, yo, you're from Chilliwack? Do you know a guy named Zach? Because my, my ex-roommate and close friend, Zach's from Chilliwack. He's like, oh, I heard of the guy. We started talking and became friends. I want to, I want to, I would kiss fucking Slippy's feet on, on like the right day. <laughs> if I had the right inspiration for it. I'm so, so grateful. So I never want to come across as that if I'm trying to present ideas. Because I know he's busy as hell. Small team, you know like how many hours required for that project I unfathomable I get it the most important suggestion I have would be the ability to say and be able to say GG after a match I actually think that you, if you can't like do this after your ranked match it's negative like a negative overall effect I think you want to be able to be like GG's even if it's just with the d-pad um, but more specifically, I wish there was a way to add people. Sometimes you have really good, like sessions with people on unrated or unranked, and and you just go like, yeah, well, let's play again later. You can you can use that on the D-pad, but how? You know, you just gotta like hope for it. I wish there was a way like integrated into Slippy, maybe like you know the actual Slippy program, not the melee ISO, where you could like recent player add keep a friends list, add friends, send them a message, right? I think that is crucial for next level development. Those two things, keeping like you uh, unifying the community, like globally or at least nationally or regionally, and then the positive thing about saying GG. Uh, I hope I hope that comes um, as soon as it can. Uh, but thank you so much for all your work. I genuinely think. There was an era of five gods, and now we're in an era of one god. Um, shout out Slippy. And obviously he's not the same. It's not that he's a competitive player in that sense. But I'm just saying, we all know what he did for the community during COVID. So shout out Slippy one time. Love.